evening, peoples. I'm Pastor Leia, and this is my friend Ginger Snap and a co-host. So welcome back to our living room for our ongoing series on uh, the apostles um, or disciples, kind of as a pedantic note. Disciples are like students and apostles are when they go out and teach. It's They're mostly interchangeable. But if you ever wondered why there's two words that are interchangeable, they're technically do anyway. So uh, last week we talked about Judas Iscariot and all of his... Um, baggage. So tonight we have uh, Judas again, other Judas, the good one, Judas not Iscariot as the Gospel of John refers to him, which is kind of delightful. Uh, I mean, of course, we've been over there, there's multiple James, and of course, there's a bajillion Johns. Um, but like, you know, if you're John confused with John, like that's not like, I mean, I can see how that would be annoying at parties, but it's not like an insult. Whereas if this Judas were assumed to be other Judas, that would, that would not, that would not be a compliment. Anyway, so Judas, not that one. The other one. Um, so uh, as in last week, uh, the name still comes from the Hebrew Yudah, which means God is thanked. So apparently um, in English and French, Bibles might refer to him as Jude, but in other languages he tends to be referred to as Judas, because that's like very literally his name. Uh, but we're just gonna go with Jude for now, um, because the name Judas has baggage for us, and uh, Jude doesn't deserve that baggage, and also it's just gonna be easier for sake of this video. Anyway, so um, according to Google, again, uh, in the year 2020, there were 2,354 US babies named Jude, as opposed to 11 US babies who were named Judas. So um, yeah, there's a pretty big difference between the two names in English as we speak it. So um, the apostles who are named in John's gospel include, and I quote, Judas, not Iscariot. Well, uh, the lists in Luke and Acts refer to Judas, um, either the son of James or the brother of James, um, which apparently in Greek is like literally Judas of James. So you can uh, pick your adventure, pick your noun. So like Judas, the, the frenemy of James, Judas, the next door neighbor of James. A son or brother is most likely, anyway. Um, and we're just going to assume that Judas not Iscariot and Judas of James are the same Judas. I only have so much energy for people named Judas. Um, so was this the same Jude who wrote the Epistle of Jude? Maybe? Uh, was this the same Jude who is Jude the brother of Jesus? Maybe? Apparently, uh, Catholic scholars tend to say that yes, he is, and apparently Protestant scholars tend to say no, I am entirely neutral, personally. Uh, so is Jude the same person as Thaddeus? Well, that's a weird question. Stay tuned. We'll get there in about two months. Um, so uh, Jude does get one speaking line in the Gospel of John. In John 14, 18-23, he says... Well, Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word, and my father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. This is the word of the Lord. So, um, cat furs. Every day of my life, the cat furs. Uh, so according to legend, after Jesus' death, we're already into legend now because Jude just has the one uh, speaking line. So there's there's only uh, so much about Jude I can comment on from, you know, the actual uh, book. Uh, so according to legend, uh, after Jesus died and after Pentecost, etc., uh, Jude traveled to and preached in uh, areas of what are now Israel, Jordan, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Armenia, and Libya. 
So he is one of the patron saints of Armenia because he and Bartholomew are considered to be like the first two Christian missionaries there. Um, so according, this is a fun one, according to a 14th century uh, Eastern Christian writer, Jude was the groom at the wedding of Cana. Um, apparently it took 14 centuries for anyone to mention this fact. I, I don't know why, uh, but I believe that I have a, a medieval church history scholar friend and I will be bugging her about this later because I am very curious uh, why, I mean, surely there was some sort of symbolic point that he was making in, in that, I don't know what it is. Anyway, um, so also, according to legend, Jude and Simon the Zealot, not to be confused with Simon Peter, because again, everyone shares the same names. Um, so he and um, Simon the Zealot were martyred in like 65 AD in Beirut. Um, axes were possibly involved. So if you see an apostle in art with an axe, that would be Jude. Um, or maybe it was a club, um, or possibly a halberd. Uh, which is a, a long um, two-handed axe. Um, anyway, he, he definitely did not die peacefully in his sleep is the theme here, whether he died by axe or a club or halberd. Uh, again, only one of the um, disciples got to die peacefully of old age, and that was John, who we did a few weeks ago. So um, he might also be shown with a book or a pen because he's connected to the Epistle of Jude. Um, pen is probably more accurate than a full-fledged book because the letter of Jude is only one chapter long, fun, fun fact. Uh, so he also almost always has a medallion with him with Jesus's face on it, thanks to another legend. I believe there's also a legend that um, the Shroud of Turin was given to him. I'm pretty sure that was Jude. Anyway, I, I didn't grow up Catholic, so all of these uh, legends are um, not as familiar to me as they might be to uh, some of my friends. Um, so yeah, he might also be shown with a flame over his head because he was present at Pentecost. I'm not entirely sure how that distinguishes him from like the other 10 dudes who were there from the original uh, you know, band of 12, um, but I don't make these decisions. Um, Anyway, uh, so his remains, after he was martyred in Beirut, were uh, taken to Rome and now reside in St. Peter's Basilica, along with the remains of Simon the Zealot. That, or they were taken from Beirut to Kurdistan, where they remain. Unless they were taken from Beirut to Kurdistan to a stronghold in the Pamir Mountains in Tajikistan. Uh, or <laughs> possibly his remains were found in an ossuary in Israel. So, um, yeah, I don't think we know where he is <laughs> anymore. Anyway, uh, so uh, in the Western Church, his feast day is October 28th. Uh, in the Eastern Church, his, I guess he's got two feast days, so double the parties, uh, June 19th and August 21st. So Jude is the patron saint of lost causes, either because... Option A, the Epistle of Jude talks about how the world is a dangerous and sinful place and it could be easy to be led astray, but Christians should keep the faith anyway. So it's kind of, you know, a faith as a lost cause, but still pursue it sort of theme. Uh, so um, a few lines from Jude uh, chapter one, I mean, only chapter uh, verses 19 through 22. It is these worldly people devoid of the spirit who are causing divisions, but you beloved, Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on some who are wavering. So uh, option B of why Jude is the patron saint of lost causes, the uh, more fun one. Um, so Jude sounds like Judas. But no one likes Judas and no one prays to Judas because, of course, he's the only, um, you know, disciple who didn't become a saint. Uh, so if you're calling on Jude, he's probably the last name on your list. And uh, if you're desperate enough to get to the last name of your list of potential saints to pray to, you're probably kind of desperate. So um, saint of lost causes, could we not play loudly with the cardboard box right now? Okay. 
we might be hearing some noises in a moment from my cat. So um, for this reason, he is the namesake namesake of the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, which is not a Catholic hospital and I believe never has been, but was the patron saint of its founder in the like 60s. And oh, yeah, it is cardboard box time. Cardboard boxes don't pet you, but apparently they're, I thought we had a deal, cat. I thought you liked doing these with me. I see where I rank in comparison to a box. Um, anyway, yeah, so uh, that is St. Jude, uh, his one line in the Bible and uh, some stories about him and scratching on a cardboard box. Um, so it, it... Anyway, we will be uh, continuing through some more uh, stories of the Apostles. Um, and uh, there was a little teaser in there earlier about is uh, R. Jude and Thaddeus the same the same person. So we'll, we'll be getting there. Uh, anyway, so um, please join us on Thursday for our uh, weekly fellowship hour on Zoom uh, at 5. And of course, on Sunday morning, we gather in person at 10 and our live stream starts at about 10.15. So we can share our uh, prayer concerns and have a uh, moment mostly for children before the camera starts. And now we're chasing the red dot. Oh my gosh. I have such an exciting household. So, so, such an exciting household. Anyway, uh, so on behalf of Ginger Snap, well, she probably doesn't want to express good night at the moment. She seems to be wanting to express there is a red dot and I must murder it. Good night from me until next time. <laughs>